What's up everyone? I'm Anana and welcome to this new tutorial series, Do It With Style, animating a 2D blink in Unreal Engine 5. By the end of this course, you'll be able to procedurally texture, rig, and animate a stylized face in Unreal Engine 5 from beginning to end. This course is designed to intermediate to advanced users. A well understanding of the control rate and material editor is really advised. If you're a complete beginner, I would encourage you to get comfortable building materials and rigs before diving into this series. And that's all. Let's get started. Before diving into the Anvil project, let's get an overview of the assets we require. We need the model of the character we want to apply the 2D eyes on. For this tutorial, we've modeled a simple head and assigned the corresponding materials to it. The face is properly UV unwrapped. A simple UV projection from view will do the trick. And to keep it simple, I've joined all the geometries encompassing the head together and skinned them to the head bone. Once ready to export, square select the character in Armature, make sure the transform is zeroed out, and scale set to 1. Then you can go under File, Export, FBX. In this panel, we want to make sure to limit the export to the selected object and only the armature and mesh. We can toggle off the animation export and under the armature settings, let's set the primary bone axis to the X axis and the secondary bone to minus Y. Let's toggle off add leaf bones and toggle on only the form bones. Then we're ready to hit export at the X. For this tutorial, I've created an empty product in Anvil Engine 5.5 and imported the character FBX and sprite sheets. Then I selected all the sprites texture in the content browser, right clicked on them, and under sprite actions, I applied the paper 2D texture settings to make sure they're ready to use in our material. We're finally ready to start our procedural material. In our skeletal mesh editor, we double click on the head material to open it up. By hitting three, and left clicking in the material editor grid will create a three vector constant that we will then convert to parameter to have editable in the material instance. Let's call it skin color and choose the color we'd like. Then plug it to the base color of the material. After that, we'll add a texture sample node and load up our left side spreadsheet texture. Let's convert these two to a parameter and call it left eyes texture. Now we want to add the eyes texture on top of the skin color with a linear interpolate node. If we press L and left click onto the grid, we'll create a lerp or linear interpolate node. Let's plug the skin color to the first input and the eyes texture RGB output to the B input of the lerp. Then let's plug the alpha node of the eyes texture to the alpha of the lerp to mask it. Finally, Let's plug the LERP output to the base color of the material. We start seeing something, but let's switch the preview mode to a plane to make our life easier. Now, we're seeing all of the three sprites in our texture, but we'd like to isolate just one of them at a time. How can we do that? Let's switch to our whiteboard. Our UV space can be seen as a plane in the X and Y space, where the one by one coordinates are at the top right corner of the square and the zero by zero coordinates are the bottom right corner of it. If we apply this theory to our problem, we have three sprite sheets on our one by one plane. And what we want is to divide them by three, equal to 0 0.33 in the X space for each sprite sheet. If we apply this division, we get one sprite sheet encompassing the whole UV space. And that's what we want. Okay, let's recreate what we just sketched out on our whiteboard in our material editor. Let's create a constant value of 1 by pressing 1 on the keyboard and left clicking on the grid. As said, we want to divide the UV space as the number of rows and columns in our sprite sheet. In this case, three columns and one row. Let's create a vector 2 constant by pressing the 2 number on the keyboard and left clicking on the grid. Then set three columns and one row. By pressing D and left clicking on the grid, we can get a divide node. Let's plug the one constant into the A input and the vector two node into the B. By pressing M and left clicking onto the grid, we get a multiply node. We need that to multiply the divide node result with the texture coordinate of our sprite sheet. We can plug the result of that into the UV input of our texture sample and voila, we isolated our first sprite. 
but how can we flip through them? We want to basically offset the UV coordinates by the space of a single sprite sheet each time we add one to a constant. So let's add a constant by pressing one and left clicking on the grid, followed by a floor node to convert it to an integer. We need that to avoid being in between one sprite and another. After that, we want to add the output of the floor node to the texture coordinate node to offset it by whole numbers. Lastly, we can plug the result to the B input of the multiply node. Now we can switch within sprites when changing our constant value from 0 to 1 and 2. To avoid edge bleeding, we can add a fraction node between the texture sample and the multiply node. Moving on with our procedural eye, the first thing we notice is that our sprite texture might be a little too big for our character as it's covering most of its head. Let's fix that. In the material editor, let's unplug the B input of the multiply and make some space to add more nodes to our graph. Let's then convert our constant to offset the sprites to a parameter and call it left eye animation. Let's move the texture coordinate node above the offset equation and unplug it from the add node. We want to add a scale UV by center node after the texture coordinates. To change the scale value of the node, we need a vector2 constant. To keep the setup as module as possible, let's create two parameters by pressing S on the keyboard and left clicking on the grid. Then call them left i f scale and left i y scale, respectively. We can then merge them together with a make flow 2 node. Let's set the scale to 1 on both the parameters and plug the flow 2 to the texture scale input. We can then add the UV output of the scale UV by center node with the flow result and connect it to the multiply node from the previous video. Now, when we change the scale values, we see the texture scaling accordingly. But we still have one issue. When we scale the sprite down, we start seeing all of them in our material. They're not isolated to a single sprite. This issue could usually be resolved by switching the sample source option in the texture sample node details to clamp. But since we're working with a sprite sheet setup, we need to get a bit more creative. What we want is to create a simple square encompassing our single sprite and use that as alpha to mask the rest of them out. But how can we do that? Thankfully, the scale UV by center node comes to our rescue as it outputs exactly what we need, a black and white square mask of our scale sprout. Let's multiply the alpha output of the texture sample to the 0, 1 mask output of the scale UV node. Then plug that to the alpha of the lerb, and voila, we got exactly what we needed. We plot our sprite for the eye scale down, but it still lies smack in the center of our texture coordinates. How can we offset it? Let's investigate it. First of all, let's make some space in our graph to add more nodes to it. Once again, we want to offset the UV coordinates, but this time it's not going to be by whole numbers. Instead, we want to create two scalar parameters again by hitting the S key on our keyboard and clicking with our left mouse button on the grid. Let's call them left eye X offset and left eye Y offset and duplicate the make float two node to merge them together. Then add the result of that to the texture coordinate node. To see the eye offsetting in real time while keeping an overview of how it looks on our character set, let's create a material instance of the face material and assign it to our character. Now, if we open the material instance panel and leave it undocked on top of our skeletal mesh editor, we can turn on the LFI offset parameters and change them to our liking. If our goal was to texture a skeleton or dead character, we would be done already. But since they're still alive, we need to add some pupils to our eyes shapes now. Let's organize our graph and keep it clean and tidy as it's growing bigger and bigger. We don't want to get lost in it. The workflow for a pupil is very similar to the one of the eyes. And in general, you will see that a lot of this process is about repeating and adjusting the nodes to get the result we desire. Let's create yet four more scalar parameters by pressing S and left clicking on the grid. Let's call them respectively left pupil x offset, left pupil y offset, then left pupil x scale and left pupil y scale. Let's then merge the offset and scale with make flow two nodes as we did for the eye sprite. Then set the scale parameter to one. Since the pupil is going to lie inside the eye shape, we can take the UV output of the scale UV center node and work on top of it. Let's add it to the makeflow2 of the offset values. 
We can then recreate the exact same workflow as the eye sprite, but for the pupil, by connecting the add node to a scale UV center node. Let's then plug the makeflow2 output of the scale parameters to the texture scale input of the scale UV center node. Dragging out of the UV output, we can add a texture sample node and select our left pupil texture. Since this is not a sprite sheet, this time we want to set the sampler type in the texture details to clamp to avoid texture tiling upon scaling. We can then linearly interpolate the eye sprite RGB output with the pupil RGB output masking it with the pupil alpha. We then replace the B input of the LERP between the skin color and the eye with the result of the LERP node between the eye and the pupil. What we get is almost the result we want, but we have some issues. Besides the pupil being oversized, it is applied on top of the eye and we can't see its outline anymore. To fix that, we can multiply the RGB of the eye sprite with the output of the LERP node again to add that on top of our result. Then, replace this output in the B input of the LERP between the skin color and the LERP. Let's clean up a bit and add comments to our nose by square selecting them and hit C on our keyboard to keep the graph tidy. We can then scale the pupil to our liking. Now the eye is working as desired. We're almost done with our left eye procedural texture, but to add the cherry on the cake, let's add a little highlight to our pupil. To do that, we want to drag out of the UV output of the scale UV center node of our eye sprite. And then, by releasing it in the graph, we can add a very useful node called Radial Gradient Exponential. Let's add a reroute node by double clicking on the connection between the two nodes and drag it down to keep the graph tidy. In this node, we can play with a few parameters the center position, radius, and density. Let's create three scalar parameters to change the first two options. Let's call them left highlight x offset, left highlight y offset, and left highlight scale. Then set the scale to 0.1 to keep the highlight small. We can now merge the offset with a makeflow2 node and plug it to the center position input of the radial gradient node. Then plug the scale to the radius. Since the highlight is sitting on top of the pupil, we simply want to add the output of our radial gradient to the RGB output of our pupil texture sample. Then plug the result to the B of the LERP between the eye and the pupil. We cannot see the highlight yet because it's at 0 by 0 coordinates of our UVs. But if we set the offset to be at 0.5 x and y position, we will place it in the center of the texture coordinates, allowing us to see it in the middle of the pupil. To make the highlight circle less faded and with a defined outline, we can play with the density parameter of the radial gradient node. Let's create a constant value by pressing 1 and left-clicking on the grid then set it to a high value, like 1000, and plug it to the density input of the node. We now have a very nice pupil highlight that we can move around to add life to our character. I moved on and procedurally textured the rest of the face. I realized I didn't like the color of the pupils very much, so I multiplied it with a vector tree parameter and exposed it to the material instance. With this workflow, I can now animate all the shapes from the material instance directly. Of this material segment of the course, we need to make sure that the parameters we exposed in our material instance are also available to our control rig. To do that, we need to add them as curves to our skeletal mesh. In our skeletal mesh editor, let's open the curves panel. If it's not there by default, you can find it under Window Curves. We can then click on the Add Curve button and start adding the parameters we want to change through the control rig being the animation parameters, the pupil and highlights offset and scales for both eyes. I've sped up the video here since this process is quite repetitive. But once done, we want to click on the X cross under the type column for each curve to set it as material curve value of the skeletal mesh. And that's a wrap for the second chapter of this course. Thanks for following along and I'll see you in the next one. We'll be developing a control rig to manipulate the eyes in Sequencer. Stick around.